Looks like the grass isn't getting cut today. That's not the only thing needs cut either. I gotta trim these bushes. We're not quite out of control yet, but it could use a trim. Wow, it is really coming down out there. Living in the Delta, y'all. Living in the Delta. Wow, Rascal, it is really coming down out there, huh? I can't see anything from here. <laughs> We're back inside the shop right now, but I tell you what, we've got some serious lightning going on. We've got some heavy rain, and it was typical, typical weather pattern for the summer here in Delta, Arkansas. We are in the Mississippi Delta portion. I know I've probably said that a bunch of times, but hey, maybe you're a new subscriber. Uh, if you are, welcome. If you're not a new subscriber, welcome. This is for all y'all. So we've got we've got quite a thunderstorm this morning. And unfortunately, pretty much the only thing that it does is prevent me from cutting grass yet again. On the plus side, I don't have to water my garden as much. We got a bunch of pieces to get through this morning, so I'm going to put you guys up on the tripod. The first thing that I want to show you guys is the finished results from the last video I shot. It's got a little bit of dust on it. My apologies. Um, this is Ripley's Alien. You remember that movie, y'all? Do you? That thing? Yeah, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Or a spider, or it could be crawl pattern because it's a cross stencil. But just a really cool, I'm happy with the way this came out. I like the color scheme. There's that cat hair. I knew it. I knew it. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, yeah, love the way this came out. This is super cool. Love the eyes. These eyes you can pick up at Amazon. There's links below. These are the Cabuchon, which is the glass eyes, which are fine um, as long as you're not rip wrapping it. But if you're running this over timber, I've got it double sealed, so we should be good to go on this bait. And of course, I've got my KVD Elites on there. As hooks, number six. Uh, this is a 1.5, so I use a number six on this one. Next up, we'll get this little guy out of the way. This is a common bluegill. These are just coming off the clear coat rack, so just wanted to give you guys a cool view on this. That blush orange on the throat. This is my own freehand pattern. This is not a Russ Allen stencil, but I like to use different um, edges for gills, not combs. Everybody does combs, and a lot of people do a lot of different things. I like to kind of come up with my own unique patterns on these fish when I can and then a very thin detail brush on the outside on that white so there we have that this little guy this turned out really well this is with Russ Allen stencil this is from his fin wheel not to be confused with a pinwheel um, his pectoral fin wheel is phenomenal I've been goofing around a lot with that the last couple of days as I've started getting more into in depth with these. And this is on that Dinger DCB pressing of the flat side. Flares out just a little bit in the back end of it. And this is the pre-foiled. Really good flash. You guys can pick these up at DingerCustomBaits.com or DingerBaits.com. Just a beautiful, and it swims well. I think I was talking to Brian last night, and I think he said the only thing that he wishes is that he had a version of this that was a deeper diver. And what I told him was this thing runs to about three feet, at least in my experience, and I'm sure he knows that. He tests the crap out of all his stuff. Um, but it runs right over top of the grasses. And in the summer, if you're, if you're fishing a river situation or you're fishing clear water on a lake, man, oh, man, this thing is dynamite dynamite 
So the fins and the gill shading, I did that in a detail, wicked detail black magenta. And that's that 0075. And you're like, oh, there's green. There's not a speck of green that I used in this. The only thing that I did that was a little bit different is I used a, a purple. This is a Createx plum, pearlized plum on the, on the very back. And then I uh, sprayed that against an ultramarine Createx blue. And then we used a wicked gold on the nose and what obviously blue and yellow make green so it came it ended up blending because i do wet on wet it blended into this really cool light almost like a light olive but it's all pearlized so super shiny extremely happy with the way this came out but that's yeah that's gold if you look real close on the nose there's no green in that at all it's just the way it turned the blue so there you go on the dinger flat side we're just going to go in succession at this point pardon the thunder and lightning i, don't, I think that that's probably going to be with us the remainder of this video these are jets and eyes uh, i think i said in an earlier video i'm not 100 percent sure but i don't think that jetson has taken orders right now because he is swamped with orders um which is a, not a bad problem to have but it is if you're trying to get new stuff so Everybody asks me, where can I get eyes that look this good that are not from him? Uh, him between him and Dead Meat, I don't know that you can. Um, they make all their stuff themselves, and it's really, really good, but you do have to wait for it. So this is that Arkansas River Craw, fluorescent orange on the belly. Look at the way that shines, though. That is super. It, it, you can see it almost looks like... A, like a textured, but that's that turned out really well on the bottom of that. Now for something completely different. So I was goofing around with paint the other day and I really couldn't pull this off in a still shot, but I want you guys to look at the way these paints blended up top. And that is not intentional. Um, it yielded me to be able to do a couple of different things with this. But usually, even if things happen like, oh wow, the paint, you know, did something crazy here which it did like that's this is not this is not any shading that I've done I just had a little olive paint and it kind of slid down and it pulled the rest of this so like it pulled all of this top down uh, but it looks like it was intentional because you know the way that I do a lot of my um, craw stenciling but it gives a little bit more depth to this I always try and people are like, oh man, how do you fix stuff like that? Sometimes you don't have to. Um, sometimes you get really, really lucky. And you can have all sorts of happy mistakes turn into really cool patterns. So I always, I always try not to swipe down the bait or rinse it off. If you get a huge mistake that you just can't correct and the paint's still wet, you can go run it under your kitchen sink or bathroom sink or wherever it is that you clean your equipment off but this is on the um, this is that 65 8a and I you know I get the, the numbers mixed up but this is a cedar run pressing and then dinger's got the longer build version of this this is the duo mimic that duo replica and it swims really really well folks this is one of the best this is one of the best sellers and the best swimmers that I have um, I love using it. This is this is my personal go-to. If I'm not using one of these party cranks from Dinger, y'all know what these are, right? If you don't, message me. Um, but if I'm not using one of those, I'm throwing one of these. And I, I've sprayed a lot of um, craw and bluegill for myself. And just awesome go-to pattern on a bait. Back to that party crank. This is the red discus. And all these, uh, pretty much except for this guy and these little ones are available on the website at www.jackalbaits.com. But here's your red discus. Tropical fish. Fish. 
almost looks like it's been like the threads have been pulled apart on that to give a little depth to it cool pattern fun pattern and these are all on these uh the s holographics or rather the party crank holographics and you can see that flash underneath these patterns this is on my neon pumpkin and it's intentional that there's no ear flaps on here because there's so much going on in this bait i really like to showcase the paint you know me i do mine a little bit different than you guys do yours but it's got a little freehand shading for those gill stripes traditional sunfish stripes and that's just a very light coating of detail black magenta on that and then we've got these eyes these eyes you can get a dinger when he's got them in stock i haven't checked the website because i've had these eyes for a little while a little hot pink on the bottom so these are all fluorescent colors and again no green just the yellow blending into the blue nolens actually no this is not this is the um oh shoot i've got a couple of different ones i've got like a lafayette and then i've got uh nolens the nolens is where's that that's this one this is the nolens hot cross because they've already been steamed. Those glow fluorescent yellow eyes, those are awesome, wicked awesome. And you can get those right there, or parts online. Just gotta dig for them. If you want cool eyes, you can find them. You just have to look for them. These are Jetson eyes as well. And I think that they match the color scheme really, really well on this particular lure. I love using those purple fades into orange because that's what this bait does is it fades purple into orange. Now this does have a little bit of turquoise on the back end of it. Fluorescent. Hmm. Well, that's all right. Fish won't care about that. I don't know how that happened. First time I've seen that. I would have scraped that before we coated it. Must have been a little bubble that was just pocketed under there that I missed. This is the Night King. You guys have seen this before. This is the whole For the Throne series. I need to give a shout out to HBO because they have promoted this, uh, this series that I've done on Twitter a couple of times. And every time that they retweet it, um, my website breaks, which is not a bad thing. But thank you, guys. Thanks, HBO. There's your Night King. Good bit of depth there. What's portrayed in the stenciling. We'll run through the rest of these party cranks. El Diablo Craw, all red. Traditional black shading and a little ash acid wash on top. I love the acid wash effect. I do it whenever I can because it does give a more natural, uh, segmented texture to a craw pattern. Looks really cool, it just looks cool. And all of these, of course, are on those holographics. That seem to be all my clients ask for anymore, these, these holographics. I can't really keep them in stock, neither can Brian. Showstopper, here's the showstopper. And I believe that is the last of the lipped square bill type deals on this now we're moving in to all of these and these some of these are in pairs so i'll go ahead and give that to you this of course is the imperial craw and i did these on video this is in the last video that i shot um this was with russ allen's craw stencil wheel which are these are phenomenal these are if you guys really want some some help in learning and forming your craw pat patterns and and working with stencils get these craw wheels i'll link russ in the description below again because they're just phenomenal tools to work with uh, and you can get it right every time as long as you can lay your lay your stencils down and keep them hold them against the bait and not move them around you're going to do very well with these and you're going to get some really good looking stuff well, i've got just a little bit of maui blue on the head and on the tail and then this is that burnt sienna underneath on the belly 
And just um, something that Cup of Cheese always talks about <laughs> from Pumpkin Bake Company. I love her work. She's a phenomenal artist as well. But remember, these are customs, folks. You're not going to get every single bait the exact same way because we're not machine spraying these. We don't stand in an assembly line with hundreds of baits coming through and just spray dots. These are all handcrafted one at a time, sometimes two at a time. Sometimes we're doing a run. But that's one of the cool things about customs is that you get that unique portrayal of a pattern and uh, you can't go wrong with it. You just can't. So think global, shop, shop local, and uh, give your custom artists some love out there. This is that Rayburn Red Fade, and I've got this in two of them as well. Now, this is from my own stencil. I hand cut these. This is not from Russ's wheel. You can see it's a little bit different there. But just so as not to bore you, because we're already around 14 minutes into this video, plus I should think I shot some rain sequence for the beginning, um, which you guys have probably already seen. You're like, yeah, of course you did. We already watched that. Um, or you skipped it, that's fine too. You can skip that. And these are on the, uh, these are the Schultz Visions. And the stuff that you get here in Stateside, there's really only one of these that are circulating um, very expensively. And those are the slow sinkers. And most of the folks that I know don't fish slow sinkers. Um, and people are getting those because they're less expensive in the MOQ, which is the minimum order quantity that the dealers have to get is less than if you're getting the suspending or the floating. And those are available, but you have to get them overseas. And I know that Eason has a few different types of these, as well as some of the other distributors from mainland China. So just know what you're buying before you buy it, because you're going to be like, oh, those are cool. They look like the Rick Kluns, or they look like the Mega Bass. They sure do, but you need to know what you're getting before you get them. So make sure you, and if, and if it doesn't say on whatever website you guys are dealing with, um, then ask. You can always shoot your distributor a message and say, hey, what do these do? Are they suspending? Are they floating? Are they sinking? And then when you get them, test them. Make sure that what they're saying is right. So that's all a little soapbox for that. But know, know your baits and know what that, these are the, these are the shells and they are suspending. And then on the custom order, the, the client that ordered these S's also ordered a bunch of these. Um, and they required or requested that I kind of mimic the patterns that I have in my, my square bills on these. So this is that Arkansas Craw again. Once again, jets and eyes, y'all. Those are just beautiful eyes. They're gorgeous eyes. You can't, you can't compare them. He does really well. Blackberry Jam. This is simple. This is effective. This is nothing but three shades of purple on this bait moving down into a violet underneath, but it's got plum. It's got the real deep purple on top and they're all pearlized paints. So they have a lot of flash, a lot of pop. And then I used um, blue, reflective blue eyes on this one. A couple more of these, the Nolans and the Purple Craws. A couple of different eye patterns on that. And then last but not least, this is a Lafayette Shad. And the reason that I, I kind of go after Louisiana names on this is because it reminds me not only of the colors of Louisiana that you see frequency, like crayfish colors and the purple. The purple is synonymous with, you know, Mardi Gras and stuff like that. So you'll see. But I've also spent a great deal of time in Louisiana, um, not just the French Quarter, but I was all over the state when I worked on the water for the Corps of Engineers as a consultant and I also spent a lot of time right after Katrina down there so love the people love the culture and uh, just like to pay homage wherever I can to those folks down south and a showstopper a little bit different eyes got the eyes are smaller so I have different options available than the stuff that I normally have on the on the uh, bigger crankbaits these are a four millimeter 4.5 technically if you want to get technical about the eyes these are 4.5 eyes on these baits 
So that is it, folks. We have run really, really long. And I hope that, you know, if you didn't want to be bored to tears with some of the stuff that I'm talking about, I, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you were able to fast forward through some of this. As always, thanks for hanging out on the channel for a little bit. I hope I'm able to teach you a few things and uh, you're able to think of some different patterns. And I will see you guys on the water. Thanks for listening to the rainstorm with me. Happy casting. Have a great weekend, everybody. TGIF. Thank goodness I fish. <laughs>